Her dating profile, it isn't what you would think, which would be like, I'm confident, I'm happy, I'm funny. It's, I can eat an entire family size bag of ranch Doritos in a sitting. And I'm that's, not ashamed of it. That's her putting her foot down and being like, I don't want to get f Maybe exactly. that's it. I'm putting this well, in. It's so you what being should funny. I write? You're being yeah. funny in defense. There's Nobody wants a funny f No. Nobody wants that. No. No. I mean, I don't want that. <laughs> Hey, what's up you guys? Yes, today we're gonna be doing another creepy video. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about deaths that have been caused by social media. So in the last 10 years, social media has taken over. And it's done a lot of good. I mean, it's connected people. It's made it so you could keep up with somebody you went to high school with. It's made it so you could find people that are into the same things as you and become friends with them. But there's also a darker side. In a study that was conducted at Carnegie Mellon University last year, at least 127 people have been killed taking selfies since 2014. And that's not the only way that people have died because of social media. I mean, there has been online beefs that have led to murder, and there has been people trying to do crazy, wacky things on Instagram that have led to their death. And today we're gonna to be talking about a few of the most intense ones. I'm warning you some of these are graphic, but a lot of these are cautionary tales as to how you can avoid death by social media. Okay, so first we're gonna be talking about a death that was caused by something called hashtag rooftopping. So rooftopping is a trend that started in Russia and has since spread worldwide. It's where people find illegal ways to get to the top of very tall buildings and take a risky photo. They're usually hanging off the building with one hand, balancing on a beam, or even doing some kind of aerobic trick at the edge of the building. Well, in 2015, a 17-year-old boy named Andrei Retrovsky died from rooftopping. So when people are doing these rooftopping pictures, they're not wearing a safety rope, they don't have a harness on. The point is that they are risking their lives for the picture. But for Andre's picture, he wanted it to look like he was climbing the wall with a rope tied around him, and then he fell. So he wanted the rope to be around him, and it would be like hanging or dangling, and it would look like he was falling. And then he actually did. Andre free fell 90 feet to his death. Now that is awful and heartbreaking and also a lesson to some people that maybe it's not worth it just to get a cool picture. Now here's the creepiest part of this whole thing. His Instagram account is still live today and the last picture that he posted was a picture of the ropes that he was going to use in his rooftop. Whew, that one is very, very sad. Okay, now this next story is very intense and it involves murder. So back in 2009, there was a 20 year old boy who lived in Virginia. His full name was Richard Alden Samuel Makrowski III, but he liked to go by his rap name, which was Psycho Sam. Now the type of music that Psycho Sam did was called horrorcore. So horrorcore is basically hip hop, but the lyrics are similar to death metal. So he would be rapping songs about killing people in very, very graphic detail. Here is just a clip of one of his songs where he's talking about murdering people and doing things to their bodies. Last night, I was the murderous rage, but now I gotta get rid of the bodies before the corpses start to get to rotting. About yeah, terrifying. That these were not just lyrics in a rap song, these were things that he wanted to actually do. In 2009, he posted a song on his MySpace page about murdering people, and it was very intense. And then right after that, he went to his girlfriend's house, murdered her, her mother, and their friend. He killed them all with a hammer at three in the morning. Well, the creepiest part, he stayed there after he killed them. Like, he stayed in the house with their bodies. Well, then a few days later, his girlfriend's father showed up, and he attacked and killed him. Psycho Sam left the house and went right to the airport because he wanted to flee the state, but the police found him and arrested him there. Now, MySpace removed all his songs because they were too disturbing and now evidence, but some of his songs are still out there floating around, and when you listen to them, they are just disturbing. So to me, that whole situation just shows that if you see something on social media of somebody talking about murdering someone, or if you see something that doesn't feel like a joke, like it feels like it's too real when somebody's talking about what they want to do to a person, you should definitely report it. Because it might not be a joke, and it might not just be a rap song, it might be a plot to kill. 
Okay, so this next death involves a song as well. Uh, not a rap song, actually a happy song. This is a death that was caused by posting on Facebook while they were driving. So back in 2014 in North Carolina, a woman had a head-on collision with a dump truck. Her tiny car was completely smashed in. The driver was 32 years old and her name was Courtney Ann Sanford and she died. Now the police looked into this crash because they wanted to know how it happened and they went to her Facebook and they saw that she had just posted. At 8.33 a.m. she posted, the happy song makes me so happy. And then at 8.34 a.m. she died. The police also took her phone and looked at it and found that she had been taking selfies as well. Now this is something that a lot of us are guilty of. I mean, I still do it. I'll be at a red light, so I'll check my text messages, or I'll Snapchat. Sometimes I'll even do it while I'm actually driving and not stopped. It's this feeling we have that we're invincible, that it's not gonna happen to us. Well, this just proves that it can. So from this day forward, I am going to try to always have my phone down when I'm driving. And you guys, please call me on it. If I am Snapchatting or Instagram storying or doing anything while I'm driving, fucking call me on it, because it could save Okay, so this next story is very sad because it's just about a few girls who were trying to get a picture in front of a cool mountain and they had no idea how dangerous that was. Rachel Louise DeJong was 21 years old when her and a few of her friends went to visit the Waikato River. They found a huge rock in the middle of what seemed like a shallow river, so they climbed to the top of it. Once they were on the top of the rock, they took out their selfie stick because they thought that that would be a beautiful picture and then something awful happened. They had no idea that four times a day, floodgates are open from a water plant upstream called Mercury Energy. The Waikato River is not just a river, it's also a dam. So as the water started rushing in, the level started to rise, and the water was coming so fast that they started to get washed away. Now a man saw this happening, so he got a rope and he tried to help the girls. He threw it to them, they all grabbed onto it, but one of them did not make it. Rachel was washed away, and her body was found in the river, later that night. Now supposedly before the dams opened and all the water came rushing in, there was a siren, and that goes for about five minutes before they let the water in. But they were tourists and they didn't know what it was. They didn't assume that that siren was for the river that they were in. And that's what makes it even more sad. The floodgates of the Adatiatia Hydro Dam open several times a day. It takes just minutes for the narrow gorge to fill with surging rapids. Signs along the walking track to the water home warn of its dangers. Okay, so this last death we're going to talk about involves Snapchat. And there is a video I'm going to show. It's not too graphic, but definitely is very, very eerie because it is the moment before the person died. So earlier this year, a 17-year-old boy named Jonathan Chow was hanging out in a shopping mall with his friend Ruth. So they were just bored and walking around and they thought, ooh, what if we do something fun and dumb for Snapchat? So they came up with an idea. They were on the fourth floor of the mall and there was a glass railing next to them. Well, on the other side of the railing, there was what looked to be concrete. Well, Jonathan thought it might be fun if Ruth Snapchatted him while he jumped over the railing because you're not supposed to do that and, you know, jumped onto the concrete. Just something kind of silly and dumb. He looked at Ruth and said, help me take a Snapchat video and I'll jump. And those were his last words. When he jumped onto what he thought was concrete, he fell right through it and fell four stories to his death. Now they thought this was a concrete floor and it wasn't. It was actually very thin and it was just for decoration. Now this whole situation was captured on the security cameras at the mall and I have the clip right here. I know, fucking very eerie to see. Like even though you don't really see it happen, you see right before it. Oof. Now I think what we can take out of this as a lesson is if you see somebody or one of your friends is trying to impress somebody by doing, you know, a stunt or something that could potentially be dangerous, please stop them from doing it. Tell them it's not worth it. Think of this situation. Because Ruth, the girl that was with him, told the police this. We both thought the ledge was made of concrete, but when he jumped, he fell right through. I knew it was dangerous, but before I could stop him, he had already jumped over. I swear I wanted to jump over too, but I knew it was too late. Whew, that one is, that's awful. 
Well, there you guys go. Those are just a few deaths that occurred because of social media. And um, hopefully we're learning some lessons today. If you see something sketchy or something that looks like a threat, always report it. Don't text and drive. Don't post Facebook pictures and drive. Don't do anything too risky for a picture. It is not worth it. And in general, just keep your eyes and ears out. Don't always just be staring at your phone. All right, you guys, before I go, I just once again want to say I mean no disrespect to any of the people or the family members of the people that we talked about. I'm just fascinated by this kind of stuff, and um, I hope it is not offensive to any of you. All right, you guys, if you want more dark videos like this, please give me a thumbs up so I know. And make sure to subscribe to my channel right down below and hit the notification bell because I make new videos every day. All right, you guys, be safe. Bye. All right, second class menu, boiled hominy. <laughs> Me when I have a girl group that's rivaling Fifth Harmony. Oh, y'all think you bad? Just watch out for boiled hominy. We all look like eggs. <laughs>